I'm making this video because it happened again, and I think we gotta talk about it. So, uh, that's my life. It's pretty cool. All right, in this video, I'm gonna try and help you choose the correct Holly ECU for your application. And I'm also gonna let you know which ECU I just ordered for myself and why. I do not sell this stuff, so I, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't care which one you buy. So don't think that this video is me trying to sell you an ECU. It's just simply me trying to help you choose the right ECU for your car. And hopefully this will be a little bit more real world insightful versus just staring at a spec sheet that might not even make a whole lot of sense to you comparing all of the different ECUs. So back to what happened again. I have to have seen this at least 10 times now, but I keep seeing people sell their HP and Dominator ECUs to buy Terminator X ECUs. I guess because of the popularity of the Terminator X, they either think that or they're told that that the Terminator X is the better option. And again, it might be more popular, but it's definitely not better. So I have a ton of cars that come through my shop with Holly. And I see a lot of people just simply choosing the wrong ECU for what they're trying to do. On paper, the Terminator X, the X Max, and the HP ECUs all look very similar, but there's actually some pretty significant differences between them. Now the Dominator does look a little bit different on paper, but I still see people buying Dominators that don't need them. And then I also see other people buying Terminator Xs, X Maxes, and HPs when they really should have bought a Dominator. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll have a better idea of which of these ECUs is going to suit your needs better. Now, just to touch on the sniper lineup real quick. Uh, that's an entirely different subject altogether. And that's simply for another video as they have a ton of models and part numbers and even different colors to choose from. In my personal opinion, if you're gonna spend the time and money converting to fuel injection, I would strongly encourage you to spend a couple extra bucks, convert your manifold over to port injection, and use one of the ECUs covered in this video, especially if the engine that you're planning on running on is extremely modified or you're trying to make big power. But if you want a video uh, comparing all of the different sniper ECUs, uh, let me know in the comments below and I can throw one of those together as well. All right, so in the most simplest of breakdowns, the Terminator X is the entry level budget friendly ECU. It is actually so inexpensive. You can jam it in your hoop, put it in and just ride, ride, ride. Put it in and just ride. Now the HP and the Dominator ECUs are the higher end options. I see a lot of confusion where a lot of people just say like, it's a, just a street car, I only need a Terminator X. Now I would disagree with that worded that way, but it does kind of work out where a lot of times the Terminator X does make more sense for a lot of the street cars. But there are definitely some things that the HP and the Dominator offer that would just work for street cars as well and be beneficial. So let's kind of start with the pros and the cons of the Terminator X, starting with the pros. Without a doubt, the number one pro is the price. Next up, most of the kits include a three and a half inch touchscreen display, and you can use this touchscreen display to run the quote unquote wizard to build you a startup tune. I fucking hate computers, all kinds. And you might notice that I said startup tune and that was intentional. I can elaborate enough on that to make a whole separate video, but we'll just leave it at that for now. Another thing that Terminator X has is an internal map sensor. I don't usually use these, but it is there if you decide that you want to use it. Next thing that the Terminator X has is it has diagnostic lights on the front of the ECU. This almost seems to do more harm than good as people get really concerned about these lights and they'll ask all kinds of questions and uh, you know, people will come to me with my lights are doing this, that, the other, and I just kind of don't pay a whole lot of attention to that. And the other thing that's kind of weird with these lights is I see it, it makes people mount the ECUs in really weird locations. Like I've literally seen people screw the ECU into the top of the dashboard so that the diagnostic lights are right in front of their face like a shift light. I would not suggest uh, keeping that close of an eye on those diagnostic lights. They're don't use them like that. And now for the Terminator X Max, the X Max ECU will actually control a drive-by wire throttle body and some electronically controlled automatic transmissions. And there is an additional box that you can order in conjunction with the X Max ECU that will work with direct injection on specific applications. All right, now onto the cons of the Terminator X. It has a plastic non-potted case it's not as robust, durable, waterproof, etc. And it just kind of, it just kind of feels sort of uh, 
uh, once you pick up one of the other HP or Dominator ECUs, it is just, it, it feels significantly different. The Terminator X will only run high impedance injectors. So basically to simplify this, if you're not familiar with what that even means, is you're kind of limited to like the 210, 220 pound injectors, depending on which brand put their sticker on the box. If you want to run something like a billet atomizer injector, uh, you can't run that on a Terminator X. We'll get to this in a second, but considering that you can't run methanol with the Terminator X oxygen sensor, you're more than likely not going to be running a billet atomizer type of injector anyways, so it kind of doesn't really matter too much. But again, we'll elaborate on that a little bit more here in a minute. There are a little bit more limitations with the outputs on the Terminator X. You can only run a PWM negative output and you can only run ground outputs. So in other words, there's no 12 volt outputs and there is no PWM positive outputs. On the input side of things, there is no thermistor input. So basically that means no additional two wire type of temperature sensors. This does exclude the coolant temperature and air temperature as those are part of the core sensors for the engine. You know, the engine needs those sensors in order to run. They're part of the kit, so it excludes that. So most of the cons for the Terminator X are pretty minimal and I would say expected for the price point. Uh, but the big ones for me that would make me consider going with either HP or a Dominator ECU are as follows. So this is kind of a big one as I deal with oxygen sensors on a daily basis. But with the Terminator X, we can only run the Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor. And these sensors are very inexpensive. So it's good on the front side when you're placing an order for your EFI kit because it's going to save you a little bit of money, but they do fail far more frequently. So long term, it's actually far more expensive to buy multiple of these sensors as opposed to buying like an NTK sensor that the HP and Dominators can use. And the other thing with these Bosch sensors is that they will not read low enough to work with methanol on force induction applications. And they also do not work very well with a leaded race fuel. The leaded race fuel will kill them significantly faster. The next thing that's a little bit of a deal breaker with a Terminator X for me is that it only has four inputs and four outputs. God damn it! So for a simple car that you just drive and you don't want the ECU to actually like control a bunch of additional stuff, that this is fine. But a turbo car, for example, uh, you can eat up the four inputs and the four outputs immediately, which doesn't give you a lot of room for any additional sensors and things like that. And the last thing is that there is no internal data logging on the Terminator X ECUs and the logging speed is fixed. Now for all three of those, uh, the big cons for me with the Terminator X, uh, we'll explain a little bit further as we talk about the pros of the HP and Dominator ECUs. As you might expect, the higher price point of the HP and Dominators basically addresses the cons of the Terminator X ECUs. Okay, now for the pros for the HP and Dominator ECUs, and this does apply to both of them. The potted aluminum case on the HP and Dominator ECUs feels like it's worth a million dollars. I love bullshit like this. Compared to just picking up a, a Terminator X and kind of holding them side by side. And the potted ECU means that you can actually get the ECU wet. Uh, it's less likely to kill itself from vibration. It's just much more robust. Next, the software actually has a lot more adjustability. The Terminator X stuff does get software updates from time to time, and each time it gets an update, the gap between the Terminator X and the HP Dominator software, like it, it does kind of tighten itself up. But the HP and Dominator software, it does do things that the Terminator X software will never be able to do. And some of the things that it does is there's more just control with a lot of different things like more advanced boost control, more advanced nitrous control, more channels for custom tables. There's water meth ICF, just to name a few. There are far more differences as well. On the input side of things, we actually have 20 volt inputs and we have thermistor inputs as well. And on the output side of things, we now have PWM positive outputs and 12 volt outputs. And there's some additional input types as well. And the HPN Dominator ECUs now give you the ability to run low impedance injectors. And once you add an injector driver box to the ECU, then there's actually some additional injector options as well. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, now for the big differences that will apply to a lot of people is we now have two gigabytes of internal logging storage. This is a big one for me. This also gives you the ability to configure how you want to start the data logs. And there's no need to fool with an SD card or anything like that. It's just gonna log directly to the ECU. 
Also, the logging speeds are adjustable, so you can choose how fast or how slow you want the logs to be, basically the sample rate. And once you get these files into the software, you can actually build math channels within the software. So it gives you a ton more adjustability when you're actually looking at the logs. Next up is one of the primary differences is with the HP Indominator, we have the ability to use a Bosch or an NTK oxygen sensor. The NTK sensor is more expensive, but it's what you need to run methanol. And it's what I would suggest that you run if you plan to run leaded race fuel. The NTK sensors are worth every single penny that they cost over the price of either of the Bosch options. Now for the pros that just apply to the Dominator specifically, just like the Terminator X Max, the Dominator is what you need if you have a drive-by wire throttle body or if you want to control an electronically controlled automatic transmission. The Dominator gives you the ability to run a second oxygen sensor if you want to run one on each bank of the engine. Kind of surprisingly, the Dominator can run up to a 12-cylinder engine. The Dominator gives you the ability to run 16 low impedance injectors staged with a driver box and it gives you the option to run 24 injectors using a combination of low and high impedance injectors. So this would be for like driving on 93 octane and then staging in two sets of injectors for methanol under boost. Not something that everybody's gonna be doing, but it's there if you decide that that's what you wanna do. And without a doubt, the biggest difference between the Dominator and the HP is that the Dominator has 47 inputs and 36 outputs. What? The jump from four to 47 inputs is just crazy. All right, now for the cons for the HP and Dominator ECUs is that they are more expensive. Shut up! This is the maddest I've ever been! Than the Terminator X ECUs, as you would expect, given that they do more and they are kind of much nicer in basically every way. The Dominator ECU is gigantic. It's it's really big. So if you're limited on space, actually mounting the ECU might be a little bit of a problem. Uh, there is no wizard for doing any type of startup files. I can't wait to get home and spend my whole fucking night trying to figure the goddamn thing out. But if you're jumping into HP or Dominator ECU, I think you're kind of past the point of using the wizard and you should be doing a more custom type file using the laptop software anyway, so that's not a big deal. And as of the time of this video, it's what, January, almost February, 2023, uh, the Dominators are very difficult to get because they're just not in stock anywhere. So hopefully the supply chain shortages and the lack of inventory will end soon. So if you decided you wanted to order a Dominator ECU today, you might have a little bit of difficulty finding one. Also, as of right now, there is no direct injection support for the HP and Dominator ECUs. That's just for the Terminator X. I can't help but think that that would probably change with the next software update for the HPs and Dominators, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't do much of any direct injection stuff, so that's not much of a concern to me at this point, but that could be a deal breaker for you, so keep that in mind. Now, the HP ECU still only has four inputs and four outputs. The HP would be a slam dunk perfect option for so many people if it even just had eight inputs and eight outputs. Bridging the gap between four and 47 inputs would be really nice, uh, but I'm not sure if the actual connectors on the ECU would even support that. So that's probably not gonna happen anytime soon. Now, speaking of more inputs and more outputs, it's worth mentioning that all of the ECUs here can all use the Holly Expander Box, which gives you an additional eight inputs and an additional eight outputs. But there are limitations using the Expander Box as opposed to just having the ECU control the inputs and the outputs. I would always encourage you to buy the ECU that has enough inputs and outputs right from the get-go. And if you run out and then you want to add the expander box secondary, uh, that's a good option. But so like for me personally, I wouldn't buy an HP and an expander box. I would just go straight to the dominator at that point. Uh, but it's kind of up to you, I guess. Also worth noting is that the Holly dashes will work with all of these ECUs mentioned. And one of the smartest things that Holly did, I think, with all of this stuff is they made the wiring harnesses interchangeable between all of the different ECUs. So if you buy a Terminator X, you know, this year and then you decide next year that you want to upgrade to a Dominator, the ECU will plug right in. There's no reason to buy a new engine harness. Now you do want to make sure that you wired all of your inputs and outputs accordingly because there are some differences on that side of the wiring and you're also going to need to pick up the correct O2 sensor. But at the end of the day, the ECU is gonna plug in. You can plug the wideband right in 
and uh, you know worst case scenario you might have to just reconfigure some inputs and outputs okay now for some real world examples and which ecu should you choose so if it's just a basic cruiser and you don't want the ecu to do much but run the engine i would go with a terminator x if you want the most robust, reliable option and you don't want to worry about O2 sensor failures, either the HP or the Dominator, if you want to run multiple sets of injectors, you're going to want to go with an HP or a Dominator. If you want to run two oxygen sensors, you're going to want to go with a Dominator. If you want something cost effective, you're going to want to go the Terminator X route. If you want to mount the ECU somewhere where it's going to get wet, somewhere maybe like in a boat, uh, the HP or the Dominator is going to be your best option. If you want to run methanol or leaded race fuel, I will go with an HP or a Dominator. If you want internal logging and you want faster logging and you want math channels, the HP or the Dominator is going to be what you want. If you want to just get your car up and running by pushing a few buttons on the little handheld thing, the Terminator X is going to be your best bet. The opposite end of that is if you want as much software adjustability as you possibly can get, the HP or Dominator is for you. And if you just want the biggest, the best, the baddest option, uh, the Dominator is the, the best that Holly has to offer. I mentioned before, I just ordered an ECU for myself. And even though I have plenty of ECUs just floating around, these are all Terminator X's. I got half one here. Oh shit. And it's probably no surprise if you had to guess that I picked a Dominator ECU for myself, for my own car. And how I came to that decision is number one, the car is drive-by-wire. So that left me with the choice of either Terminator X Max or a Dominator. And the primary reasons that I went for the Dominator route is I wanted the ability to run an NTK sensor. I wanted all of the 120,000 inputs and outputs that the Dominator offers. And I really wanted the internal logging and the adjustability of the sampling rate of the logging. So those were the the primary things that made me decide to order the Dominator. However, all of the pros that we listed of the Dominator versus the Terminator X, I plan on taking advantage of all of those with the exception of on that particular car, some of the injector stuff. Uh, what the Terminator X offers in terms of injector control would have been plenty for this particular vehicle. But if down the road I change my mind or want to run methanol or even want to pull this ECU out of this particular car and put it into you know that one over there, uh, staged injection on that car would be far more of a priority to me so I kind of like to buy what I think is going to be the best and be able to you know kind of use it in multiple different things I kind of don't like it where you buy kind of the lower end thing and then you outgrow it two months later and then you gotta buy something else and you know keep doing that over and over again so the Dominator is the most expensive option Mr. Andrews asked him how much it cost and he said it's illegal for you to ask me that but in my opinion if you plan to take advantage of what it offers is actually very fairly priced. And one last note is the HP ECUs are actually kind of like the redheaded stepchild of the group uh, as people seem to either want a Terminator X or they just jump right into a Dominator uh, due to the additional inputs and outputs. So what this means is that people just simply like look over secondhand HP ECUs. So you can usually pick up a used HP ECU for a similar price to a Terminator X. And I take an HP over a Terminator X any day of the week. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. So hopefully this helped you narrow down which ECU that you need for your particular application. If you have any further questions, just leave a comment below and we'll try and help you pick out the best ECU for your application.